today we're learning how to do weavings. You'll only need a few art supplies for today's project. So this is what you'll need. A piece of small cardboard. Um, uh, this one measures about five and a half inches by seven inches. I wouldn't go much smaller than about four by six inches and it can be as big as you want depending on how much time you want to spend on your weaving. Um, you're going to need either a parent to help you out with an X-Acto knife or a razor blade knife to cut the cardboard or a pair of sharp scissors. If you're young, you might need your parents to help you with this. A ruler for cutting straight lines. You'll need a bunch of yarn and a few pieces of tape. Okay guys, let's get started learning how to do a weaving at home. So you're going to start off with your piece of cardboard. This one measures about five and a half inches by seven inches, but it can be any size that you want. You're going to want to cut the cardboard with straight edges. I used a ruler on my larger sized cardboard and cut the piece out so that it was somewhat straight. Once you have the piece of cardboard cut out, what you're going to do is either take your scissors and cut down and this is about one finger width. Or you take your razor blade or your X-Acto knife and you cut down. You are gonna need to do this with a parent to make sure that you don't cut your fingers. This is the most dangerous part. So these lines, if you wanna know the exact measurement, maybe a half of an inch um, or one big um, finger width. All right, once you're done with that, you actually don't need the sharp tools anymore and you only need scissors for cutting your yarn. So now that you have the loom started, let's talk about how to create and finish to add the yarn. Hey, look everybody, Miss Defaw, the second grade teacher at my school has come to join us. Just wave, hi Miss Defaw. She's gonna watch us while we create our weaving. All right, so this is going to be the color for my warp. You won't really see a ton of this color, so whatever you have the most of, this is what you wanna do. You wanna take the end of it and with a small piece of tape, tape it to the board. And that's gonna be the back of our board. Now I'm gonna take this yarn and I'm going to be hooking it through the little cuts I made at the top and the bottom. So I've made 12, exactly 12 on the top and bottom. You wanna have the same amount. And I'm just going back and forth so that the yarn goes through every single one. Almost at the end and when I'm finished and I've got no more spaces left I'm just gonna flip my board over to the back and cut my yarn and then tape it to the back and now we're ready to do weaving now, if you don't have a ton of yarn, you can also go in between all of these if you don't wanna have yarn on the back. This, I think, is the easiest way to create your warp, which is a key weaving term, and that's just the vertical um, yarn on your loom. Okay, go and grab your colors of yarn to create the weft, and we'll start that right now. All right, now your loom is ready for the weft, which is gonna be the pattern of colors we do either over, under, and there's a couple different knot tyings that you can do. So the first I'm gonna show you is how to do an over, under. So you wanna take your yarn and do the over, under, over, under. And you're gonna do this until you make it all the way across your board. Now, if you have a needle at home um, with a large eye for the yarn, that might make this a bit easier, but you can totally use your hands. You do not need um, a needle. Now, I'm gonna pull however much 
yarn I have all the way through. The only thing you want on the end is just a short little tail that you can tuck in later or even cut off or tie. Now you're ready for the next row and it's going to be the opposite. So if this row ended in under, your next one's gonna start with over, under, over, under, over, under. You want here for the opposites to happen where you have under here, over here. And again, you're just gonna go across the whole board doing that pattern, either over, under, or, under over and then pull it through once you've reached the end you don't want to pull too tight you kind of just want it to loop around the end and then push everything to the top and continue doing this for has however long as you want on your loom with this color so if you want to do more you ended here with under so the next row is going to start with over and just keep doing this until your yarn is gone or you want to switch colors. So I'm going to do a few more rows using my red yarn on my loom. And when I'm done, I'm going to come back and show you guys how to start with a different color. All right, once you're done weaving, all you're going to do is take your scissors and cut the yarn so that you have a bit of a tail left behind. Now you can just leave it off to the side, you can tuck it under, or you can even take it around the warp right here and tie a knot and cut off the extra so that it's safe and secure. And then move on to your next color. Using the next color, you wanna follow the same rules you did with the color before. If it was under, you want to start the next color with over. If it was over in the last row, you want to start with under. And then just continue to keep weaving with the next color. So I am going to do a few rows using my orange. And I'm going to follow all the same directions that I did up here for the red. So when I get to the end of the row, I'm gonna pull the yarn through. I'm going to leave a tail and don't forget to push the yarn up so that it's nice and tight. And then when I go to the next row, I wanna do the opposite. So here I went under, so the next row I want to go over. Also important to remember, when you're pulling the yarn through the loom, you don't want to pull the yarn too tight because if you do, it'll make your warp get really skinny in the middle. And that'll change the size of your weaving and it will no longer be rectangular. It'll be very wide up here and very skinny in the middle. So when you're pulling the yarn through like this, make sure it's nice and loose and it's not pulling in. So I'm going to weave a little bit more of orange and I'll be right back when I'm done with that. All right, I'm done with the next color. So all I'm gonna do is cut and leave a tail. And then I'm ready to move on to the next color. I'm gonna show some more advanced techniques about how to weave a little bit differently. Um, these are totally optional. You can actually do an entire weaving using the over under stitch that we use here with red and orange, and it would look great. These techniques are different, more advanced if you want to challenge yourself. So I'm gonna do the same over under following the same pattern as above, but instead of weaving all the way to the end, I'm only gonna go halfway. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I won't make this one too many. I'm gonna pull it through like normal, leave the tail, and then I'm gonna come around. Let me make sure I stand. Going to weave back so that I'm only going through half of my loom. And on this side, 
I can use a different color. So I'm gonna continue doing the over under only on half my loom for a few rows and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. I finished my yellow and I've cut it off and now I'm gonna start with my next color here and I'm gonna weave and I'm actually going to be going over and under in between my weavings here on my yellow. So I've left it really loose so I can still see my warp and I will be weaving the other half of this section. And this is a more advanced technique. You um, can experiment with this. Um, it is easier to weave like this if you leave a big gap in your weaving here. So you could totally skip um, your last weave to be here. So your last stitch doesn't need to be here. It could be here but you'll get a little gap in your weaving, like a little peek through hole, which is fine. Um, but I like my weaving to be without gaps or holes. So for me, what I'm doing is when I finish a line, I'm making my last stitch in between so that you don't get a hole. And how I'm doing that is I'm just kind of sticking a pencil underneath here, lifting and kind of grabbing the yarn and pulling it through. And this is a little difficult if you're brand new at weaving, but um, you're still sticking with the same stitch over, under. You're just doing a little bit harder of a technique when you're connecting it here. So I'm going to keep doing this green color. And when I'm finished, I will come back and we'll talk about tying some knots with the next color. The last technique is called a riot knot. So I've taken my next color of yarn and I've cut small sections. They are about five inches. I'm gonna grab three of them and I'm going to go under the first two strings like that. And then the next two strings, so of, on my warp, the one and two, I've gone under. Three and four, I'm gonna go under those and wrap them around. And then I'm gonna push everything to the top. And that is a Raya knot. Now, sometimes with kids and using yarn, this can come undone, so, this isn't part of the technique, but if you're feeling a bit insecure about this, you can always tie it here to create a knot. But once you weave underneath this with your over and under stitch, it will actually keep this in place. So you can actually leave it like that. So let me show you again. So I'm grabbing three at a time and I'm going to go under two, and then take them all the way across the top. And then on three and four, I'm gonna go under. And then pull them all in the middle, push to the top. Now, it is very difficult to go in between here with a Ryan up. You can, um, but this is a basic weaving technique and I don't wanna stress anybody out um, while working from home. And I have 12 strands here, so I can actually do three Raya knots perfectly. And then continue my over under pattern with the next color, or I can continue with my Raya knots and go in between. 
So that would look like I take two, go under, go over the next two, go under, and then push everything to the top. And I can also do that here. So I'm gonna do one more and I'll be back and show you how to continue weaving on the underneath um, to keep all these Raya knots in place. All right, I am done with my weaving. I um, wove underneath the Raya knots pretty close to where they ended. You can see how close I am here to hold them all in place. I'm cutting my last yarn off. So now I want to get my weaving off of this cardboard loom so I can hang it up somewhere. So I'm going to turn this over to the back and I'm going to cut right down here, down the middle. And I'm going to pull my tape off of my loom. As long as you take really good care of your loom, you can actually use it again for a different weaving. And I'm going to carefully pull my warp off the loom, top and bottom. Try to eliminate how much pulling you're doing so that you don't ruin your weaving. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my warp and I'm going to take the first two and I'm going to tie a knot. And then I'm going to take strings two and three and tie a knot. And then I'm going to take strings three and four and tie a knot and continue this all the way on the top and the bottom. Now if you're overly cautious about wanting you're weaving to stay in place, you can always go a second time and repeat that knot pattern so you get double knots and that will really hold it in place. So I'm going to do my knots on the top and bottom and I'll come back when it's totally finished. All right, I've tied the top at the bottom. It creates this really cute um, twisted pattern. Now on the sides, I've already started cutting, so I wanted to show you what I did. I took two of the strings on the side and you can tie them together. If you're worried, you can always do two knots and then cut off the extra. You can also take the strings, if you don't like the look of that, you can take them around the back, lift up, gently with a sharp object, maybe a pencil, and pull the extra string through to hold it in place. You can also do that. And that is how you do the basics of a weaving. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a lot of work. I promise the end result is amazing. You can even hang these in your house. You can put a stick through them or a skewer and they can make nice wall hangings. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Bye.